In the last year or so, we've been lucky enough to take some press tours to the city of Aizu Wakamatsu and the wider Aizu region in western Fukushima Prefecture. The central theme of these tours has been a celebration of Aizu Wakamatsu's samurai culture. For many, the city is regarded as a final stronghold of the samurai when Japan transitioned from the shogunate to practical imperial rule during the Meiji Restoration in the late 19th century. Within this overriding theme though, ourselves and other journalists who attended the tours were able to cover themes relating to the ongoing revitalization of the wider Fukushima region following the 2011 nuclear disaster, also the local sake industry, and more recently the 10th anniversary of the Great East Japan earthquake, and also how the uh, outbreak of the novel coronavirus has affected the local tourism industry, which is a big industry for the city of Aizawakamatsu. In fact, during an interview with one of the city officials in February this year, we were told that following the outbreak of the novel coronavirus, visitors to the city of Aizu Wakamatsu, prior to the launch of the government's go-to travel campaign in July 2020, had dropped by around 80% compared to the previous year. The management at one of the city's hotels reported similar drops in sales as a result of the outbreak. This is a city that knows a thing or two about overcoming adversity though, and the strength and the pride of the local people is often said to be rooted in their samurai heritage, the central theme of the tours we attended. The fate of the samurai of Aizu Wakamatsu was linked to the fortune of Japan's ruling Tokugawa shogunate. When Hoshina Masayuki, the first lord of the Aizu domain, decreed in the family precepts in the 17th century that the Aizu clan should be loyal to the shogunate. One of the tours of the region started out at Hanitsu Shrine, which is located at the foot of Mount Bandai in the town of Inawashiro. This is where Hoshina Masayuki is enshrined, and a short climb north of the shrine's main precincts leads to the cemetery housing Masayuki's tomb. In establishing the precepts of the Aizu Matsudaira family, it was Masayuki who determined that the family must be loyal to the Tokugawa shogunate, and in doing so, set the Aizu clan on a collision course with the Meiji reformers that would reach its climax during the Boshin War. This climax arguably took place at the city's iconic castle Tsurugajo. It was here in 1868 after a month-long siege that the lord of the Aizu clan surrendered to imperial troops. No visit to the city of Aizu Wakamatsu could be considered complete without a visit to the castle which looks amazing at any time of year. In the distance, overlooking the city and the castle is Imoriyama, a hill east of downtown Aizu Wakamatsu. Here we climbed through the snow to visit the gravestones of 19 Byakutai, teenage samurai fighting for Aizu during the Boshin War, who committed ritual suicide when, from the same hill, they saw what they thought to be the city's castle, Tsurugajo, ablaze and their cause to be lost. The location of the gravestones is a poignant place, and there's lots of other places to explore on the hillside, like the intriguing Sazaido Buddhist temple with its unique architecture, and the waterways and smaller shrines at the foot of the mountain. During both tours, we visited Aizu Hanko Nishinkan, a reconstruction of the school where samurai would send their children to be educated. Established in 1803, the original school is said to have been one of the best of over 300 Edo-era clan schools in Japan. It's an amazing facility to explore, and we saw scenes depicting the kind of classes that students would attend, including one about how to commit ritual suicide by sword. We also had the opportunity to try Kyudo, which is the Japanese martial art of archery. and to speak to a local sword polisher or kogishi. As well as practice Zazen meditation, which I have to say was really hard for me to get to grips with, but an interesting experience nonetheless. Among the foods enjoyed by locals in the Aizu region is horse meat. 
and one evening for dinner we went to a restaurant that specialises in this. It was kind of funny, but also really unfortunate at the same time, that many of the people on the tour were kind of turned off by the thought of eating horse meat, and there really was so much of it. Still, the restaurant, Tsuruga Aizu Higashiyama Sohonzan, was a stunning place, and the owner and head chef was so lovely and came out to serve our rice and talk to us about his restaurant and the local food, which was really cool. Sake is a big deal in the Aizu region, and is an industry that was championed by Aizu clan samurai. Established during the middle of the Edo period as part of measures to stimulate the local economy following the Great Tenmei Famine, which was approximately between 1782 and 1788, the local industry continues to flourish today. Among the breweries that we visited in the region, was that of Yamatogawa Shuzoten in the city of Kitakata. We tasted some of the brewery sake and learned about how much of the energy powering the brewery is provided from renewable sources, a move the brewery made after the 2011 nuclear disaster. During the tours, we stayed at a couple of amazing ryokan in the onsen areas outside of central Aizuakamatsu. On one tour, we stayed at the accommodation facility Harataki in Higashiyama Onsen, as you can see, the rooms were pretty spacious. During dinner at Harataki, we were able to see a performance of Geigi, female entertainers and performers of traditional Japanese arts. At the time of our visit, there were 15 Geigi working in Higashiyama Onsen and in other locations in the city of Aizawakamatsu the largest number across all six prefectures of the Tohoku area. The population of Geigi is declining, so if we don't make efforts to preserve it, it will disappear. It's in something of a crisis, Mikiko-san, one of the Geigi, told us after the performance. On a more recent tour, we stayed at the Aizu Ashinomaki Hot Spring Resort, or Kawaso, in Aizu Ashinomaki Onsen, where our room looked out over a narrow valley to the snow-covered mountain slopes on the other side. There's a performance stage in the lobby at Okawaso, which has become something of a hit in recent months, as it's said to resemble the setting of a scene in the popular anime Demon Slayer. The Aizu region isn't close enough to the coast or to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to have been, shall we say, immediately affected by those terrible events which occurred in March of 2011. But there's no doubt that the region and the people have been affected nonetheless. During our most recent tour to the region, we had the chance to interview some of the people behind a company which was set up to promote and facilitate the use of renewable energy in the region following the nuclear disaster. And we also paid a visit to the prefecture-run Fukushima Museum, which was holding a special 10th anniversary exhibit showcasing preserved items of disaster heritage to encourage visitors to think about what the events taught us and how we should move forward over the next decade. One of my favourite places that we visited on both tours was Ochijuku, a beautiful old post town during the Edo period, located in the mountains southwest of Aizawakamatsu city. We were lucky enough to be in Ochijuku to see the traditional houses covered in heavy snows, which, if you're like me and you come from a country or region that doesn't see much snow, makes for a spectacular sight. The icicles hanging from the eaves of the roofs were cool too, if a little frightening. and we couldn't resist getting into the mini igloo. We made the short climb partway up the mountainside at the northern end of Ochijuku to take in the classic view over the village. During our time in Ochijuku, we interviewed one of the craftspeople working to preserve the village's traditional kayabuki thatched roofs. We were given a brief demonstration of the techniques which took place in a village school now closed to classes, I guess because there just aren't enough students anymore. Some of the traditional skills and techniques that are employed in the preservation of the wooden structures found in Ochijuku were inscribed on UNESCO's representative list 
of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. It's an amazing place to visit if you have the chance. We left the Isa region feeling, well, completely tired to be honest, but in a great way. Personally, I really like the region for its combination of nature and the laid back or calm city of Isa Wakamatsu. It's also special to me for the people we were lucky enough to have met there. Now, I guess all this samurai spirit sort of stuff has a marketing element to it, but there's definitely a strong and charming spirit evident in the local people that I really admired in whatever it may be rooted. Okay guys, so thanks for watching the video this far. Just a reminder, the footage that you've seen in this video came from two trips to the Isa region, one of which was back in uh, 2020, and the other one was uh, this year, 2021, in the winter of this year. We hope you enjoyed the video, hope that you uh, learned something about the Isa region, and maybe one day would be interested in taking a trip there yourself. If you like watching this kind of travel related video, do let us know in the comments below and also click on that thumbs up icon. In the meantime guys, thanks as always for your continued support of the City Cost Japan YouTube channel. Subscribe to it if you haven't done so already. There's a bell somewhere around there which you can click on to make sure you don't miss when our latest video comes out. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time guys, bye bye.